Have any of you guys ever been afraid of AI robots taking your jobs? <laughs> Pretty much everyone, right? Well, as a kid, I wanted exactly that. I worked at my parents' restaurant, and I wanted nothing more than a robot to do my job for me, to cut the vegetables, <laughs> to wash the dishes, to work the fryer, and of course, to do my homework. Fast forward to today, there's of course ChatGPT, which can do my homework, but there is still no AI-powered robot that can do my job. <laughs> Why is that? Well, about five to 10 years ago, almost everyone thought that AI was first going to come for the blue-collar jobs, and then for the white-collar jobs, and then way down the line for the creative, artistic jobs. But what we've seen in the recent years is that it's been the exact opposite. I believe this is due to a massive wall that we have to leap over for robotics. It is incredibly difficult to create robots. You have hardware issues, you have software issues, you have to create a controller, a simulator. It is so incredibly difficult. Now, I'm working at MIT's computer science and AI laboratory, building a bipedal robot, one that walks on two legs. And at the same time, I'm studying intelligent robotics at MIT. This has given me a unique perspective into a few key developments in this technology that I believe will not only revolutionize robotics, but it will reverse some of the trends that we've seen recently. But the question is, now is the time for AI-powered robotics. How do you build those robots? Well, the first step is always going to be hardware design. How do you design the hardware for a bipedal robot? Well, in the past, what you would have had to do is to optimize just a single component, you would have had to run through all the calculations or rely entirely on your own intuition. Now, what's available is generative design. Generative design uses AI such that you can input the designer's constraints and design considerations and create novel designs that you can compare against each other and weigh the different design trade-offs. This is incredible. It saves time, it allows you to model for stress and strain analysis. It allows you to create optimal cutouts for different shapes. It allows you to even optimize for strength and weight loss. Not only that, but generative AI has gotten so much better over the past few years. Researchers are now working on ways to create entire mechanisms from a designer's initial specifications. But even more enabling than generative design has been the availability commercially of actuators, like motors. These motors from MIT's biomedics lab have been produced such that now the motors that are necessary to create walking robots like bipedal robots or quadrupedal robots are now commercially available and manufactured by companies all around the world. So now let's say you've got your chunk of metal. Let's say you've got your robot. What do you do next? Well, many of you have probably seen Boston Dynamics Atlas. It's humanoid robot. One of the most difficult parts about creating a robot like this is actually creating the brains of the robot, or the controller. What makes it so incredibly difficult is imagine trying to tell the robot how to move with the joystick forwards or backwards, or even how to do the moonwalk. <laughs> it, it's incredibly difficult because these robots approach nearly 30 degrees of freedom, which means that all the joints and limbs, there's almost countless different configurations that they can be in. And to tell every single motor how to move in each particular way is incredibly difficult. What we've discovered, or rather researchers have discovered in the past two to three years, is that through deep reinforcement learning, we're able to have robots essentially learn how to walk on their own. You can look in the simulation and see thousands of copies of the robot essentially learning, teaching itself how to walk by falling over trial and error over thousands and thousands of iterations. This enables controllers to be built very, very quickly. But now, what if the robot also had perception? What if it could see the objects in its environment, know how to interact with those objects, and make informed decisions based on those objects? Well, now that's actually possible, thanks to advancements in both computer vision and mapping systems. We now have technology to allow robots to be able to see the world around them and make informed decisions. Real-time, vision-based navigation. So with robots becoming easier to build and deploy than ever before, it is our job as engineers to build robots with both ethics and intent in mind. Does your robot dog really need to run at 20 miles an hour? 
every single design choice that we make as engineers has a future potential implication. Whether it be us trying to design robots that can explore the depths of our oceans, robots that can save lives after natural disasters, or even do life-saving medical procedures, robots that could work alongside humans to fill job gaps. Robots can be used for incredible things, but they can also be used for malicious intent. It is our responsibility to embrace what we need to do to create ro robots with both intent and the ability to do good in this world. From this conference and all the incredible talks before mine, one thing is clear. Generative AI is inevitable. But what form will it take? What will embody physically general artificial intelligence? Thank you. <laughs>